You big dummy, you didn't go live on YouTube. We're gonna start this over. So apparently Grant was a big dummy once again and uh, didn't go live on YouTube. So now we're live on YouTube and we're gonna start this whole thing over. And you know what? I really like the stream assets that we put on. So give me just a second. Let me just show that off because I don't know if you guys saw it on YouTube. Just look at it. Just look at how good that is. Oh, it's so good. It just looks so good. I just love it. I'm so... This was something that Thomas made just for kicks. And it just looks amazing. So I just wanted to show this off because otherwise I would lose it. Um, so I apologize for not getting this up. I thought we were totally live and I was talking to people in the chat. But apparently I forgot to hit go live. You know, things that happen. This is why we're supposed to have staff that ping me when they know that I'm not live. Thanks for that, Justin. Yeah, all right, now we can do it all. Sweet, we'll edit it down anyways, because what we're gonna do from now on is make certain that we edit these things down to cut out all the superfluous BS of when Grant doesn't know what the heck he's talking about and make for a good video. So I apologize for the couple of minute delay, but we're gonna jump into it. We've got the pieces and, well, editor's note, Grant was a big dummy and didn't realize Fusion was throwing him a freaking bone and Nadav freaking called it out and I completely missed it. There's an emboss feature right freaking there, you big dummy. But hey, that's what happens sometimes. We're gonna make this happen for you all. We've got some music playing. Let me know if it's too loud or if it's too low. It's just to kind of fill in some of the, you know, pain in the butt issues that we got going on when I'm a little more quiet than I should be. Um, so let's jump into it real quick here. For those of you that are just joining us, you didn't watch the last live stream. First off, thanks for joining us. Second off, where were you the last one? We're gonna be doing an intro to 3D modeling and uh, yeah, we're gonna be talking all about making parts for my cane. And for those that don't know, I sustained a back injury a little over a year ago that has forced me to use a cane to not get accosted so much in public because while it is fun meeting new people, I've been meeting them for all the wrong reasons and that's what we're trying to avoid. So instead, let's get into making this thing look cool so that at the same time my disability becomes a marketing effort because hey, that's the way things need to go. And uh, we got ourselves a Monster Cat subscription so we can have a little bit of music playing and hopefully it's not too loud and if you want different music next time, let me know, but it's gotta be royalty free because your boy over here can't get a copyright strike. We're trying to get monetized over here. And while we're at it, I guess we should, uh, you know, give out the company name. This is 3D Musketeers and we are here to help you go from art to part. We're gonna put Big Grant on the screen once again because we're here to help you go from art to part. My coworker, Victoria, is off doing important cat things, but maybe she'll show off, uh, you know, a little bit later tonight by uh, falling asleep next to me and just looking adorable. But if you have an idea that you want to get made from art to part, you could reach out to us, YouTube at 3dmusketeers.com. We make really cool stuff, some of which you see behind me. And if you follow us on social media, you'll recognize which way does Grant need to move. This way, we've got the Vault of Asgard sitting behind me, which, yes, is actually thermochromic. Which means when I hit it with a blowtorch, it changes color and the blowtorch is still there too. Because that's just how it goes around here. It's been a little bit slow, but that's okay because we're here to help you make awesome every single day. So let's go back to Tiny Grant and talk about it. So yeah, Nadav, man, I feel like a dummy, man. I, I apologize for not like completely seeing the fact that you were giving me the answer and I just couldn't see it. Emboss is exactly what we're looking for because it follows the profile. So let's jump back into it 
This is the vertical section of my cane, the, the thicker section. This is on the thinner section. We're going to put three musketeers on the thicker section because, well, that's where it's going to be more noticeable. And we want to embed it rather than raise it out. And the reason for that is the way that FDM 3D printing works. By the way, get subscribed because we have videos all about how FDM 3D printing works where I actually take a hot end this exact hot end, and dissect it for you on video to teach you how this stuff works. But we're gonna go into it just a little bit today so we can really understand. And yes, for those that know me, I'm not putting on a show. This is actually how I am. It's just what happens when you don't drink coffee ever and you survive on hopes and dreams of making a successful business and making your parents proud one day and being able to buy them a home or something. I don't know. We'll figure it out later. But this is a hot end for a 3D printer. And let's, you know, let's go to Big Grant real quick, because Big Grant will be able to show it to you a little bit better. This is a hot end. Let's get it to focus. There we go. And what this is, is the meat and potatoes of a 3D printer, because it's basically the hot glue gun. If this thing was actually on and hot right now, I'd be in a lot of pain, because the nozzle will reach temperatures well above 200 degrees centigrade. Otherwise known as, oh, expletive deleted hot. Um, I don't know if I'm allowed to cuss on live streams, but I don't think I want to because we want to get that sweet, sweet ad revenue. Because, yeah, diversifying your business. We'll get into that one day, too. Get subscribed if you want to have more content about small businesses and 3D printing. But this is what we're dealing with. And the problem with this technology is when it's printing, it doesn't do great when it's overhanging especially when it's overhanging in an area that it's never done before. So what you can do to mitigate that is add support material. And actually, if you look behind me here, that part, all that squiggly line stuff in the middle, that's actually support material. And you know what, Grant? You've got a, you've got a failure. You can show some support material right there. That is support material. And that helps you print in air which is not something normally that you can do. And to give you a better idea, imagine making something out of wet spaghetti. If you can't make it out of wet spaghetti, you're gonna have a hard time 3D printing it without support material. So, let's jump into it. We're gonna be pushing in rather than pulling out. One, I think it looks better. Two, it's easier for 3D printing. And three, because I can. So let's jump into it. I believe we still have a sketch. Do we still have the three on the sketch? No. Yep, we do still have the three on the sketch. Beautiful. So we have our sketch from last time. And don't forget, as soon as this series is over, we're going to go ahead and release these files to you all. Open source so you could do whatever you want. We'll have them on our website. We'll have them linked in these live streams as well as most likely on prusaprinters.org. Not sponsored, but we'd like to be. So we've got the number three because 3D Musketeers. We're gonna go to emboss, so we're gonna go under the create tab here. Grant, you, you're still on big grant, you big dummy. Every time, every freaking time. Justin's now telling me to insert magic. Well, hey, whatever. Insert magic of the fact that when you actually do a little bit of research and figure out what you're doing, that you'll know. And that's the big thing about this stuff. It's got a crazy steep learning curve. But, and I know you're watching, thank you so much for sending me one of your first STL files that you made, not in Fusion 360, but FreeCAD. And FreeCAD is completely 100% free and open source. We're going to go through that in a later live stream, but today we're going to finish up some of the Kane mods. If you are watching on YouTube, because I've got it live on YouTube, I don't have it live on any other platform, so if you're watching on Twitch, or Facebook, make sure to go to our YouTube page and watch me over there. But let me know in the comments what dumb things you want to add to the game, because we're going to do it, and we're going to show it off. And if I can find a way to record without looking weird, I want to take some of these weird ideas that we have out in the public and record people's reactions to me walking around with a cane with dumb things on it. It's going to be crazy, because we're actually going to use colors like... Grab it. Ah, uh, like this silk blue that's really accurate to our company color we've got some leftover crazy copper 
from the Big Snakes project that we recently did. And if you're wondering, snakes? What's with all these snakes in my 3D printers? You should take a look at our time lapses. And of course, I'd be remiss if I didn't mention Brad's Orange from, uh, oh God, Grant, the name is deleting out of your brain right now. Where are we getting it from? It's coming from, good Lord, someone, Justin, in the comments, remind me where the heck I can buy Brad's Orange from. It's a dog, Jesse PLA from, I forget it. Oh, well, we're just going to move forward. Let me know in the comments what it is. We're going to hit the emboss tool. That's going to do exactly what we need. We're going to hit the face. So what we did is we're going to select our profile, which is that. So we have one selected. That's what we need. Printed solid. That's right. It's Brad's orange from printed solid. And if you don't know Brad's story, go back and watch episode 10 of our podcast because Brad will tell you all about his story. And I apologize. The audio kind of sucks. I was learning OBS. It's getting better now. But yes, Justin just dropped a link in the chat for you all, all about Brad's Orange, because a dollar of every purchase of that filament goes to charity to help kids like Brad make awesome. So we've got our sketch profile. We're gonna click on the faces because this is the face we wanna wrap it around. And freaking look at that! Oh, and of course it's out of stock. You know why it's out of stock? Because it's damn good filament. I'm actually, you know, I'm going to scoot back and grab it because I have one of the original rolls of Brad's Orange. It sits back here. Ah. Man, even picking up a kilo these days is tough. Just look at that color. Just look at that color. This is one of the original spools that Brad made when he was up at printed solid and I know he really wants me to print with it but this one's really special to me because this is one of like these are the ones that he took home and he brought us back one and that that's you know man that means a lot and I, I I don't know if I could ever print with it it's got too much sentimental value to me but anyways let's do it and if you look it's pulling away but Grant you said earlier that we're not gonna pull it away you're right we're gonna push it in and that's all about the depth so it's measuring the depth from this face, Grant, it's called a face, okay? And instead, we're gonna go negative, but we don't wanna go too negative. So let's look at going, I don't know, a millimeter deep. And to do that, we're not just gonna hit one, because all that's gonna do is make it less. We're gonna go negative. And there you go, you can see that it's cut in. What I wanna do is I wanna look at how much meat we have left on the bone. It's a little bit, not a ton. Gotta stay hydrated. Alright. I gotta get like a... I gotta have Amber put up a saline drip for me because so I don't have to take drinks during the during the live streams. But there you go! We've got the three, but the work's not done. I also realized I only chamfered one side of these things before we went ahead and uh, did this. But then we get to show you why and how to fix that. So... Bob's your auntie! There we go! We got it done! Because, you know, magic. Now, we're gonna do one of my favorite things inside of Fusion. It's the fillet. And it is, uh, key F. Now, I have a 3D connection Space Pilot Pro, and that allows me to have macros. I am not going to use those macros. I am going to use it to move around because it just does make life a little bit easier. They are expensive. Buy them used, because you're going to save a little bit of money doing it. But we're going to go ahead and do a fillet. Again, not sponsored. Giving out lots of, lots of good tips here. So we're going to, no, you clicked on the wrong thing. So we're going to select the face here. And what that's going to do is it's going to add a round over everywhere. And since we went in one millimeter, let's look at and see what half a millimeter it doesn't like it. Where are we mad? And that's the other issue that you get with this kind of thing. We may not be able to add a fillet. Let's look at trying to add a really tiny one. We can add it, and there you go. It adds a corner round. And so we had somebody, and actually I believe they're still here, Southern Scrapbooking and Crafts, I believe reached out to me regarding bath bombs and the molds for them, and that they've been having such an issue dealing with getting the things out of the freaking molds. Fillets are a wonderful way to start that, but the other way is to make sure that you have a way for air to get in, and that involves draft angles. 
I'm trying to time my, my voices to the music too, so that, I don't know, we can maybe have some fun with that. Awesome, awesome. Glad it was you and that I didn't forget. We're going to put the biggest fillet that we can on this thing. It doesn't like .25. And what happens is it'll say red. This fillet or chamfer could not be created in the requested size. This may be occurring at the ends of the selected edges. It's actually because this is so small. If it put that much of a fillet on it, it would for some reason close in on itself. So I'm going to try to make the biggest darn fillet that I can. And it looks like it's not going to give me a damn thing. Okay. 0 0.11, 0 0.12, 1.3. We're still good. 1.4. For the win, 1.49. 1 1.49 1 doesn't work. Can we go 1.45? And we busted. Okay, well, it is what it is. We're using a rolling ball corner type. I think it just looks the best. You can look at using setback. That's on you. Um, but we're going to look at draft angles. And you know what? Let's do it. Let's roll back the fillet here because I want to talk about draft angles. Because we've got you here right now, Southern Scrapbooking and Crafts. By the way, cool YouTube channel. I took a look at it. You, you, you're getting up there. Keep up the good work. Um, we, let's see, can we, it does not let us select for draft angles in here. So we're just going to ignore it. We're going to look at, where is it, Grant? It is draft. And so draft, uh, where is something with a draft on it, Grant? Come on. Dang it, Bobby. Uh, I guess that te technically has a draft on it. Whatever, we'll use it. This is one of my spare lights that we use. Um, if you look in the reflection of my glasses, there are lights. Let's go back to Big Grant and let's hope that Grant doesn't forget. This is drafted. So if you notice, it's angled. Think of like a red Solo cup. Think of anything that's injection molded. It is likely thinner at the base than it is at the tip. And that's because... You want it to come out of the mold and not create a suction. That's a big deal when you're working with powdered material like a bath bomb. So make sure your stuff works. Um, Justin is saying, won't do it with an emboss. I Now I know that. There, there's a lag between when you all see me and when I see your comments. So yes, it will not do it with an emboss. So we are instead going to do a draft. We can draft on this. And so if we wanted to make this injection moldable, which we probably don't, there'd be some, we'd have to change it on here too, but let's just take a look at it real quick. What are you trying to draft? Okay, well, let's just do it. To figure out which direction you need to go, just put in like a stupid high number and it's going to show you what's going on. Now, I don't know which way it went. Oh, it won't even do it. All right, let's do five. Could not taper surface as requested. Negative two. You gonna like that? You're doing something. No, you're not. All right, well, hey, maybe it won't work at all with an emboss, but a draft angle will effectively create a V. Now, it doesn't have to be all that sharp for injection molding. Yeah, Justin's right. It probably won't do it because there are so many faces. No surprise there, but technically by nature this thing is drafted because it is following the curve so there is some drafting and when you look it's only a millimeter it's not going to create a ton of suction when you're looking at the manufacturing process you want to make sure that you have as little issues as possible when you're creating it because the harder it is to manufacture the more money it costs you in the long run now, the keen-eyed among you might look at it and say, wait a minute, we've got a chamfer over here that we did in the last episode. And again, for those of you that are just joining us, we are making accessories for my cane. And if you didn't watch the first live stream, go back and do it. Um, Justin, it looks like you're a moderator. Can you add that to the description for me? That way we have the link to the first live stream. If I already didn't do it, maybe I did. And I was smarter than I think I am. I don't know how to check it because I am not a professional YouTuber yet. The first time you get a check for doing something, you are now a professional. Unless you're a professional engineer, that requires certification. Don't play those games. All right, so let's finish this thing up. 
we have the fact that we don't have any chamfers on this side or over here, right? No chamfers. All right. So let's look at when this occurred. This occurred... Interesting. All right, let's take a look. It occurred right here. We had it go to there. Okay. Now we want to go back to here. Get, get away, Fusion. No one wants your stupid thing. Okay, thank you. Interesting. It looks like it should have transferred. But it clearly didn't. So let's see what we did to cause that problem. So we're going to roll the history back to see what's going on. Cool, thank you, Justin, for handling that. You know what, it's just not happy, so we're just gonna redo it. I believe this was a half millimeter. Yeah, it's a half millimeter chamfer. So we're gonna do a chamfer just to fix all of this up. And that chamfer is going to help ensure that the hardware that we're installing, both the nut and the bolt, can fit in adequately. There we go. We got our matching chamfer. Click OK. And now we're going to hope things don't break. So we have the history slider down here. This allows us to go back and forth as often as we need. So let's take a look and see what happens. It got it. All right, so now that we have it, let's just go all the way and see what happens. No, all the way, there we go. Fusion's gonna think a little bit because again, Fusion is very processor intensive. So if we take a look, Fusion is incredibly processor intensive and I am running an older 4770K and it is overclocked quite considerably, but you can see Fusion is using a fair bit. If we take a look at the processes, Google Chrome is using the most because I am live streaming. But Fusion, when we do anything heavy, it's going to load itself down. So be careful. Ryzen processors love Fusion 360. So just be warned about that. Now all we have to do is do the exact same thing all the way up. So let's work on it. Let's do a sketch. We're gonna do it on that plane. You know, actually, I could probably go back to, was it this sketch? Yeah, I could probably go back to this sketch and just start projecting everything that we needed to project, which is basically just these. Let's get these projected. See what happens. And to project, I'm using the P key. Um, I believe how else? Always done it with the P key, so I gotta figure out how we do the project. Projector include, there it is. P for project, and it projects the body silhouette Great cutter, don't buy a cricket. Edges, uh, work geometries and sketch curves into the active sketch plane. So what we're doing is we're making certain that we know what this down here looks like, but just up here. So on this one, we're going to go to create. We're gonna go to text. We're going to click somewhere just like that, give or take. Oh. There we go. We want Ossifont. Now, we did get a different Ossifont. I don't see it in here, which tells me it didn't work. But hey, that's okay. We're gonna do D. And I think we did 20 millimeters. <laughs> yeah, Cricket. Cricket, I want to thank you. Because there's not a lot of people that are going to thank you, but I will. Thank you for helping us grow a YouTube channel 15x in a week. I appreciate it. And uh, for all the viewers, I love doing this kind of like, we've never done this kind of stuff before and we need help. I love helping people. And all of you that have emailed me at YouTube at 3dmusketeers.com, 
Let's put that in the chat, too. See if it works. I think it does. Cool. If you email me there and you have questions, I'm going to answer them. Justin's not going to answer it. Thomas isn't going to answer it. Tad ain't going to answer it. Me. I'm going to answer your questions because it's all about getting together and working as makers to make everything better. So, let's hit the bold. I think that's what we did with the three. Maybe not. Let's verify. Oh, we did Calibri. Grant. For shame. It's Ossifont or die, my friend. Do we like the bold? I think we need the bold because these aren't all that big. So yeah, let's 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 have the bold. Same thing for here. Let's make sure that we have the bold on. It's a little iffy on the D, but that's okay. Now, I'm going to finish the sketch because we changed the font and I want to see how it looks. And yeah, go figure. The emboss. So it says, I've got a problem. You embossed something different. Now you've changed it. So let's talk about this. It's like I'm deliberately making these mistakes, but I promise I'm not. Basically, the emboss is saying, whoa, 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 I don't know what's going on here. Fix your dang problems, you whippersnapper. And I'm saying, well, got you. I got you. Let's bring that on. There's your sketch plane, negative one degree. Are you going to take it? Ooh, you might, you're not going to take it, are you? Okay, so we used, um, I grabbed, like, a proper font for this, but, hey, whatever. Oh, and look at that, they've got emboss or deboss. Um, let's see real quick. Let's hit cancel on this. I want to try something real quick. Let's go back to here. Let's turn that sketch on. I want to... Oh, there's a way to do it. It basically forces it to become a line that we could then look at. And I'm going to go to Discord because I can do that without you guys seeing and see what Nadav sent me. He... Okay, let's see if we can get this to work. I have a feeling that because this is not proper, clean... Uh, oh, you know what? I bet, too, we gotta be in the sketch. So let's go into the sketch. There it is. Explode text. Boom. If we can get that to emboss. It's gonna yell at me. I know that. Missing profiles, I know. Okay, so it will not work. All right, so unfortunately, I'm going to be forced to use something else. I'm asking Justin what the other font that we use in our uh, Discord, but let's... Also, would you guys like to hang out on a Discord with us? Um, you won't obviously be able to see any of the, like, proprietary 3DM information, but... I, we've been debating on setting up a Patreon, so those that want to come and hang out, there's a cord under my chair. Got it. Those that want to come and hang out can do so, but since you are going to be utilizing some of my time, I got to get a little bit of, uh, you know, help, if you will. Um, so let's take a look and find another font. Hello? Later on URW. I doubt I've got that, but let's find out. Thanks, Justin. Why are you not opening, Fusion? Oh, Fusion, you're mad at me. I don't want Ossifont. Please, thank you. You're not gonna... Okay, two can play that game. All right. Apparently it's an Adobe font, so. 
Ah, fusion. Why do you do this to me? All right, let's just refinish the sketch. Let's let everything be happy. Let's unhide the sketch. Let's check it one more time. Oh, come on, fusion. All right, whatever. You're not going to work. We'll go do another one. We'll see if another one's going to play ball. You don't want to belong to any club that will accept you as a member. Well, we don't want you anyways, Nadav. You're not invited. But you're totally invited. <laughs> M. Come on, Fusion. What is going on? All right. Well, let's... Oh, wait. Hold on. Something changed. Something changed. Hey, it came, something came up. Aha, there it is. All right, so we use, apparently it's an Adobe font. So, hey, let's find it. It's called Clateron URW. That is another one of our in-house fonts. I got Clateron BT. I like that. Are you sure we're not gonna do Comic Sans, Justin? Are you sure? So the thing with uh, Clateron is that it's really thick. Like it's not all that tall. I might be able to make that, make it work when it's a little bit thinner. I'm not doing Comic Sans, Justin. Justin's in our private Discord uh, telling me that I should do Comic Sans. And one of you, and I think it was Allison last time, or maybe it, it was one of you all that said Papyrus and got me on a Papyrus kick, and I'm mad at you for that. Let's see what the regular looks like. That's way too thick, so let's go back to... Honestly, I thought... Uh... Come on. LTBT was good. And I just want to point something out. Yeah, it's hurting just a smidge. Justin, you don't get a vote. <laughs> it's my live stream and I'm gonna do what I want. Um, all right, let's go up to 15. That w should be okay. I'm gonna try it. Let's see what happens. I just love, I, I like you guys. You know, you all are pretty cool. We like to have fun here. That's, having fun is what makes work fun. All right, so I like the light BT last time, but we're going down to 15, is that right? Yep, we're going down to 15. Let's get the three adjusted as well. And that way I can stay on brand because Thomas, even though he hates Florida, would probably fly all the way down here just to yell at me about using the wrong... God, that three is disgusting, but we're gonna go with it. What's David font. I don't trust any of you people. Well, I don't have David font, so you ain't getting it. <laughs> All right, so let's just make sure that everything is going to work appropriately here. Move the sketch palette back to where it belongs. Oh, Mamacita, it did work. And see what we can do is we can come back to the emboss command. We hit control. We can click on all of these other features. Are you going to work? Let's find out. No. I wonder if I will need to select more faces. No. Okay. Well, whatever. We can do individuals. I don't care. Let's take a look here. We have... And see, there's the thing, right? You have a kerning issue on these because they're not, like, proper fonts. I want to see if we can get more fillet in there. Let's see if we can put in, like, a half millimeter fillet action. Hell yeah, we can. And that's the difference between a good font and a bad font, ladies and gentlemen. But... 
that is really sharp and is not going to print well. So uh, let's first roll back the fillet. F for fillet and also for friends who do things together. We're gonna take these two down here and we're gonna soften them up like, I don't know, 0.15 millimeters? Yeah. It It's gonna make for less of an overhang, which should make it a little bit easier for things as we move forward. And quite frankly, I just think it looks better that way. And you know what? We're gonna do one there. And, uh... Because I freaking can and there's no one to tell me otherwise. Thomas is gonna watch this later and hurt me. No, he's not gonna hurt me. He lives, like, many, many states away. But it's always the joke. It's always the joke. Thomas being our brand guy makes certain that I don't do things that are off-brand because, well, it's a little easy sometimes. Um, since we can do a half millimeter, let's look at doing like 0.25, something to soften it up. And what that's going to do is it reduces the overhang that we need to have when we're 3D printing. See, it reduced it by a quarter of a millimeter and you might say, well, a quarter of a millimeter, Grant, that's not all that big. And you'd be right. But it's 25% of how deep that is. We just reduced the amount of bridging by 25%. Apparently I'm getting close to being off brand. Well, Justin, these are live streams and Thomas isn't here, so if we both don't tell him, maybe he won't know. <laughs> okay, so now at half a millimeter, it doesn't work, and that's likely because of what we just added. So let's take a look if we can do a 0.45. We can't. Can we do a 3? Screw it. We're going back with a 0.25. There you go. And that's going to make it a lot easier for us. And honestly, that's pretty freaking regal, if I do say so myself. It looks awesome, I think. I don't care. So we'll do one more emboss so we can go through it, but I want you all in the comments to tell me some weird things that you want us to add to these. Justin, if you can check Twitch, if you can also check Facebook for me to make sure that we are watching and listening to everybody, that would be awesome. I guess I can always check my phone, but Facebook is really, really tough. I don't see any messages from Facebook, so we're just gonna keep doing it here. Minus one. Oh, so Emboss keeps your settings, which is pretty darn cool. Uh, we're gonna do another one, so it's under Create, Emboss on the M. Face is there. Bingo, bango! That's what we like to see, ladies and gentlemen. So let's do our fillet one more time. You know, the D having the sharp edge is probably not an issue. It's actually more of an issue down here as we look at doing the print itself. Let's look at the M. No real issues with the M, and I don't think it's going to benefit from it. So we're just going to do these. Oh, yeah, we can do that. Eh, I don't know. All right. I'm going to fix it. We're getting rid of all the sharp edges points like this because it really messes with the way things look. And I am going to be persnickety about that. Just a little bit. We'll do F for another fillet here and here to 0 0.25. There we go. And it just looks a lot cleaner, right? Now realize, I am displaying it this way so I can see my edges. Really how it's going to look when it's printed. Whoops, Grant went through the wrong one. Visual style is just shaded. So you're not going to see a lot of the edges, but this kind of sucks to design in because you can't really discern. We are also using the stock colors of Fusion 360, which I believe is steel. If we hit A, that should bring up appearance, which it does. Um, what is this? It is steel. So if we wanted to change it to, I don't know, let's look at a plastic. Double, we'll click on it and we can just find a plastic. Now this would be fun if we made it out of peak 
If you want to learn more about the materials like Peak, Pake, and uh, oh man, they, they do have or Orgasol. We're going to be doing a whole series where we talk, well it's probably going to be one video, maybe two, about the materials for different 3D printing so that, well, when it comes time to buy a printer, you're going to know what's going on. And again, if you're just joining us, we are looking at making accessories for my cane. Go take a look at one of our uh, past live streams. It was linked in the chat above of what we're making. So I like matte plastic, and you know what? Let's go on brand. Let's make it blue. Oh, it's translucent, Grant, you big dummy. We need opaque plastic. Where are we going for opaque plastic? Right here. I like the matte. I think it just looks better personally. Now, of course, it's really dark, so it's hard to see, but we can go glossy yellow. Now, it did change it back to shaded. I want my shaded with visible edges. Let's see how that looks with the blue. I don't mind it. We can look at, you know, other colors as well. So if you're designing something where you also need your pieces to look different. It's like, let's say I wanted all my fronts to be blue and all my backs to be red. There you go. And that way, when I'm working on them, if I have multiple pieces, it's easy for me to discern where they belong without coming here. Because, oof. <laughs> Oof. So there you go. Justin, hit me with some ideas that we want to do, buddy. What are we doing? I'm going to go to grab CAD because that's what we're going to need for this. And I'm just going to toss it on the... No, Grant, log in first, then toss it on the screen. Because otherwise, you're going to give away your personal email address, and we don't want that. Okay, so now we've got GrabCAD on the screen. We still have little Grant here. Um, I was thinking, like, a couple or something kind of weird, but just for kicks. But this is GrabCAD. We talked about GrabCAD, I think, in the last episode. But... Uh... uh Allison Ford is asking if I'm doing letters on the front and back. The answer is no. I'm going to leave the back totally clean for now. If we're going to do letters, we can, of course, always reprint, which is a beautiful feature about it. But let's look at a um, cup holder, maybe. The nice thing about GrabCAD is you can download models in CAD formats. So we can look here, this will give us it in Katia. And if you are using Katia and you're watching me, I really don't know why, but Katia, Katia is for the masochist in all of us. It's a very tough program. But if we look at the, the Bullnose Ford truck cup holder, that's only an STL and we don't want that. We want to find SolidWorks, Step, and IGES files. So if you do work with us and we say, hey, do you have a CAD file? We're asking for a Step or an IGES file. Oh, that would be cool. Why am I doing this? I can just design my own damn cup holder. <laughs> Let's do it! We'll put, we'll, you know, we'll put the funny stuff on the back. How's that sound, Allison? Let's do that. And because I want it to be on a couple of them, right, because... And actually, I'm going to have it for my water bottle that I use daily. Can we see it? Yes, we can. It's, I don't know, a generic one. I'm gonna cover up their branding with mine because Thomas has taught me things. So to do that, we need to move some stuff. And to move some stuff, you use the align function, which is under modify. We go to align and we're going to go from here to here. Boom. We can also go another from and another to. Boom. Now remember, and you know what, Grant?
do it. We're going to go to the appearances. We're going to make sure that we color these appropriately so we, oh, that's translucent. Nobody likes translucent. It's also gonna throw off the designing if it's translucent. So now we know we're on the right side. See, again. And the interesting thing here is I can put it on the side. And if you do it on the side, we do it in two pieces, okay? And so when it comes together, it can hold whatever it wants. Now, mind you, if we were doing that, I would probably use something out of the firearms industry. And I know he's talking about firearms, but Picatinny rails or weaver rails is what you mount like a scope onto a rifle with. Because those are a standard, I know those exist because we've made parts before with it. So we can take a look. And if we look up, oh, Grant, can you spell it? We can look up a Picatinny rail and we can actually grab, oh, M block, we can grab actual Picatinny rails and be able to cut them in half, right? Then when they go together, there is a firearm on that chat that I just don't want on my stream because that's how you get demonetized. But the Picatinny rail enables us to have something that can split apart and then we can screw on a cup holder on the side. So right now we're gonna add it to the back and we're gonna talk about doing this in a way that we don't end up fusing these two components together because, of course, they're going to have different letters on them, and we don't want the backs to be forced together. If we want a smaller cup holder, we can take off the top and only have the bottom. And so right now, we're dealing with, if we click at the top, we hold shift, we click at the bottom, here will tell us how much room we have, which is 60 millimeters. Now, be warned, it is the minimum distance. So if we instead click here and here... Again, hitting shift. It shows me 24.615. That's actually from this point to that point. Which is ridiculous. We don't want that. If you want to get better, you can use the measuring tool. You can click here and here. And it's going to give you the shortest distance. I'm just trying to see if it gives us... It doesn't. Ah, it does. Diameter is 28.15. So the biggest point between these two is 28.15 millimeters. The smallest is 24.615. So there you go. Escape to clear it out. And it's like it's never freaking there. So let's work on the bottle. So to do that, we're going to need... Grant, you hit a key. We're going to need our handy dandy... Not notebook calipers. Again, you don't need Mitatoyus to do this. Let me reiterate. You don't need Mitatoyus to do this. This is a $20 set from Amazon. I used to have a $10 set from Harbor Freight, but Miss Kitty decided that she was going to knock it off my desk and actually broke it. And that's why you buy good tools. Buy ones, cry once. I'm okay with not buying a Mitatoyu right now. You make your own decisions. Anyways, let's get at it. To do that, we're first going to need to measure the diameter of the bottle. Ugh, and of course, it's full of water because, you know, hydration is important. So we got to make it wide enough. Make sure your bottles are capped before you flip, but this one actually has a lock. So we're going to lock it, but we're going to measure it from the bottom. And what you do is you put it on a smaller section. Grant, go to the big cam so people can see it. So, you put it on a smaller section and then you just drag it across or drag one section across. Okay, and where it becomes the largest, which is 92.71, that's the diameter, give or take a little bit. So it could be 92.5, could be 93. We're going to play it safe and go 94. Okay, so let's, let's do it. Let's freaking do it. Um, really, I want to hide some of these so they're out of the way. To find what a body is, you just click it. It'll highlight itself there. Goodbye, Mr. Bond. Goodbye, Mr. Bond. 
goodbye and goodbye. So we want to create a sketch. So we're going to do right up here for create sketch. Grant, damn it. He did the camera again every single time. We're going to back it up. Thanks, because clearly Justin isn't paying enough attention. Thank you, Allison. I appreciate it. Gosh, every time. So if you click on it, it highlights what it is. We can remove it here. And to find this, normally everything would be up and closed, but you can click this little arrow and it shows you all of your bodies. We click on this one here. It shows us it's that one. We'll click on this one. And since this is front eight, we can also assume that the one behind it is back eight, which it is. I apologize, guys. I am still learning this whole camera thing. Having somebody to help me on the live streams would be pretty cool, but we don't have that kind of a budget yet. <laughs> so we're getting there. Uh, so we know we want to go with a 94 millimeter diameter. So before we do that, let's get some of our line and X to turn it into construction. X to get rid of it because it always wants to do another one. We're going to drag one all the way up. Again, X to get rid of it. Or sorry, escape to get rid of it. X to get rid of construction. And if you look up here, as I hit X... It comes on and off and again constructions have no constraints on your project you can constraint to them but they are effectively invisible as far as extrudes are concerned now to do a cup holder we need to make sure that we have the diameter and we want to be on center because good lord we don't want this thing off center so this allows us to grab on center and here's the cool thing if we hit d for dimension we can actually dimension how tall we want this to be so let's say we want it to be a hundred and when we want to do our circle, which again is C for circle, we can just slowly come down here and the X means that we've grabbed it. And eventually we're going to find a triangle. Triangle. There it is. That triangle tells us we are dead in the center. And so when we go out to 94 millimeters, it'll work. But we're going to have a problem. I'm going to do this because I want to show the problem. But now it's all black, which means I can't move it. This this outer line is black, which means I can't drag this and move it. We have a constraint. And the constraint is a midpoint constraint. And so to get rid of it, literally, delete. And now we're back being able to do what we want. So now we can take this and drag it any distance that we want. Now this is a pretty freaking heavy water bottle. 60 millimeters up I might end up grabbing a third one on here we're gonna show you how to do that but we want it to be enough away and we can actually measure this by going to create point we can grab a point right at the bottom and we can grab another point right there so we can hit a dimension tool and actually dimension between the two points and it's D again for dimension we're at 7.3 yada yada millimeters we gotta be probably a little farther than that. Let's go with eight. And there you go. It's now constrained it. And if we decide later on that we want to change something, it's really easy for us to go back and fix it. And again, just like we did to do the offsets here, we're going to hit escape to get rid of the dimension tool. O for offset. And we're able to now decide how much of an offset that we want. Now, we want to make sure we got a big offset. I'm going to go with a 9mm offset. But you might be saying, wait a minute, Grant, it's going to intersect. I know. That's the idea. That's how we get the stuff to stick together. And then we're going to end up... Ooh. Now, everybody, what did he do wrong? Because he just realized it. Nobody in the comments figured it out. What's up, Tars man? I know who you are, but I don't know if I'm going to give it away. We got a problem. Who figures it out? In the chat, what did I just do wrong? Let me know. Come on. Give you 10 seconds. And that was 10 seconds. Oh, she got it. Allison Ford for the win got it. I put it on the front like a big freaking dummy 
because I'm like, oh, we're going to extrude, but wait a minute, we won't be able to get the dang screws in. So, well, there are two things we can do. We can say, oops, I did it again, get copywritten claimed by Britney Spears. Hopefully I was right on that. Or we can cheat and use the mirror tool, which is exactly what I'm going to do. We're going to grab all the objects that we need, including these little points, because I guess I don't need that one. We're going to grab all the things that we need to make this happen. We're going to have a mirror line, which thankfully we did that early on. We can click that mirror line and there you go. Is everything an acceptable answer? For anyone wondering, Tarzman is my brother. <laughs> Give him away. That's what happens when you're cheeky on the stream, homeboy. All right, we got it. Oh, Grant, you hit finish sketch and we ain't done yet. We're far from done. Actually, let's call it. I love, you know, Justin, every time with you all. The first thing we want to do is make sure that we have an actual base to it. And this is a 32 ounce water bottle. It's one of those double vacuum insulated yada yadas. But that's a big deal because that means it's freaking heavy, right? Water is eight pounds per gallon, I think. Someone drop that in the chat and let me know if I was wrong again, probably was. But we want to make sure we have some oomph for us. When we drop this bad girl in there, she stays. So let's look at, um, I'm thinking five millimeters. So it wants to go down, which we don't want. So we're going to go negative five millimeters. And it, now it wants to cut and see we don't one milliliter per gram. Thank you, Justin. That doesn't help me. <laughs> we're going to go to join. 8.34 pounds per uh, per gallon. Thank you, Jonathan. Oh, Justin retracted the message. I didn't know you could do that. That's kind of cool. But here's what's going to happen. When I hit join, you're going to see all these bodies fused together. Take a look. Wait, did it? <laughs> Did it not actually fuse together? It totally didn't. All right. I'm wrong again. Who's surprised? Not this guy. That's okay. Now, every time you do your first extrude, your sketch is going to go away, but we still need it where we're going. We're going to do another one, and we want to extrude up to the top of this. This, for sure is going to join these two pieces together. It, yes, it's gonna be lopsided. Um, now, because of the way the cane handle is, give me just a second, let me, let me do something. The nice thing about having other people here, I was able to turn on my microphone and have, and have Tarzman bring me the cane. Um, it will potentially be harder. Oh, you were gonna, you are gonna do the, the pull me off the screen. That would have been a funny bit had Big Grant been in there. Now here's the thing with this cane: the weight is actually not centered over the cane itself. It's actually centered right about here, so it's a little bit off. This might actually work what is going to be an issue is actually the inertia of the water sloshing around in the bottle and i could do two water bottles because hydro homies but we're not going to do that because that gets really heavy and grant's gonna have enough problems this is honestly just to show people how to do this i will probably never use the water bottle but we're gonna print it and try it anyways because we can but when i click the join baffles in the bottle we're not getting that serious when i click join it's likely yep okay there it goes so it got rid of the line in between them we're gonna fix that at the end we're not gonna worry about it right now and so if you all have known me long enough what are we gonna do we're gonna fill it it because we put that on everything f for fill it to make this nice and smooth 
maybe, I don't know, five millimeters sounds good. Now we do have a thing here. We've got a radius down here, so we might get lucky enough to have, I don't know, maybe a two millimeter fillet, something to make it a little bit stronger. Also, this music is basically playing the same stuff over and over again, so I apologize. Let's get some better music in here. Ah, uh, more music. I don't know, just randomly threw some more in there. Hopefully that helps out. Yes, it is Crab Rave playing right now. <laughs> um, Justin is telling me that I need to drill in some holes because of the suction. <laughs> Justin, put that gif in the chat. I want to see that gif in the chat. We... We can't. Well, okay, we can put drip holes in it, but we're not going to have a vacuum problem. And you know what? That's because we're going to go back and we're going to do the freaking drafts. Let's do it, boys. Let's do the draft. It's actually technically a taper angle for this. But it sh Oh, you know what? No, screw it. Let's do a real draft. Let's do a real freaking draft. Just like the NFL. Let's do a real draft up in this mother. So, we've got what we want to draft, which is that. Hello, that. The faces is, is this, and we want to draft, oh, actually, we don't want that face, we want that face. Right? Yes. All right, we're going to do a 0 0.5 degree taper. And there you go. So we've now tapered it. Which gives us 47.48 millimeters at the top. And 47 at the bottom, which is really cool. So it'll just taper it out. We want it to go to a one degree taper. We can. And that is technically more than adequate to be drafted. So let's freaking do it. Oh, this song is just way too slow. Give me something better. Give me something better. Whatever. We'll take it. All right. So now we can bring back the fillet. And it's totally happy, which is awesome. So there you go. Uh, who was it earlier that asked about it? Southern Scrapbooking and Crafts. We just showed you the draft. It's under Modify Draft, just so you can see it one more time. And for those of you that are just joining, I appreciate you hanging out with us. It means a lot. We are making accessories for my cane, and this one is a big, stupid water bottle holder. Is it functional? Technically. Is it useful? Probably not. Do I care? abso frigging lutely not. Now, we want to have it be a lot stronger, so we're going to add some fillets over to here. But we need to make sure that we can still access the nuts, so let's just drag it out a minute. Yeah, that ain't bad. So there you go. It's grabbing onto more meat. And this is truly like the guy that skipped leg day way too much, right? <laughs> it might work. It might break. But we're going to find out. And that's the great thing about 3D printing. We can freaking do it. And we can do it together with technology. And I guess this would have to be further down on the cane too. Maybe not. Let's take a look. I'd want the water bottle kind of here. It's going to take up a lot of that space. But that is A-OK -okay with me. Guess you can see that. All right. Thanks again to Tarzman for bringing it to me. I appreciate it. All right. So there you go. We've got our water bottle holder. And you know, Justin, I think you're right. Let's add some drain holes. And we're going to do a circular pattern to do it. We're going to do a circle, I don't know. Uh, ah, I'm going to show you another trick here. 
You don't have to always work in millimeters or inches. You could do 0.25 IN, and even though I was working in millimeters, now we can do inches, and it's just gonna show up as 6.35, because that's what it actually is. Now, dummy over here should have actually put it on this line, and we wanna see how far I want it from that, um, you know, from that center point. So let's hit D for dimension. Let's grab to the center points. We are 34 point something or other. Let's just go a nice smooth 30 millimeters. Cool beans. We're now gonna come in here and we're going to do a circular pattern. We're gonna go ahead and grab that. We're gonna go with my center point and it's a full wrap around ladies and gentlemen. So we can go as many as we want. We can turn this thing up. So we got lots of drain holes. These are not necessary. That's excessive. Oh man, Voronoi pattern would be cool. Justin, put that plugin in the chat so people can take a look. I might not, but I'm willing to grab it if it doesn't take a ton of time. Let's see, uh, where would it be if I did have it? It's probably under... Ah, who the hell knows. I'm going to grab... Let's go with six. Yeah, six is good. And we're gonna do one more circle in the middle. But this one says it's gonna be 6.35, right? So again, I can do it in millimeters or inches. Okay, so we're gonna finish the sketch. We're gonna bring it back. We're gonna hit E for extrude. We're gonna grab every one of these. And there we go, we have our holes. We're gonna get rid of the sketch. We're gonna fill it it because we freaking can. We're gonna grab both sides, F for fillet, as always, and friends that do things together. I don't know what U is in fusion, but we're gonna find out in just a second. Since these are five millimeters, if we do 2.5, it should create perfectly smooth toroids. Which is dope, and I want it. There you go. Justin posted the Fusion 360 Voronoi add-on. Let's do it. So let's download it for Win64. Go away, Rakuten. Nobody likes you. Are you going to let me download it? No. Dang. I probably have to sign in, so I'm going to move that off the page so I can go ahead and sign in. Let's get us signed in here. And I'm back. Win 64 for the win. Grant, you big dummy, it's right there. Ah, yeah, yeah, yeah. I know, I missed it. Voronoi patterns are freaking cool. So let me put this back up here so we have it. I might need to hide my screen because I don't want to show you IP addresses for my computer, so you get to have the intro again. I'll be right back. Waiting for the sketch generator to install. Letting it make changes to my hard drive. Oh, all right. That was like crazy easy. Um, let's go ahead and save this where we're at right now. I agree with Justin though. We should do the Voronoi pattern. So we're gonna freaking do it because we just gotta send it, right? Okay, so how do I use it? I'm assuming I might need to restart Fusion. I am reading the documentation on it so I can figure out how we can make this a Voronoi pattern. Just 
Justin, how do I do it? How do I add the Voronoi pattern into Fusion 360? Talk to me, buddy. Oh, let's see. We've got... Is under modify? Nope. Hmm. Trying to find what we're looking for. These are not the droids you're looking for. Oh, I need to restart fusion. That's going to take a hot minute. But... Is it worth it? I don't think so. I don't... Um... Hmm... Shows up in the toolbar. I wonder if it is in... It's not in render. Oh yeah, you can render stuff in Fusion 362. That's a totally different thing for another day. Let me see. Okay, it does show up in the toolbar. So, all right, what do we do? Are we restarting Fusion or not? What are we doing? Talk to me. If we're restarting Fusion, we're going back to the intro, and you're just going to have to sit there for a few minutes. Let's make sure that we save it to deal with our version history, because that's important. You know what? Screw it. I want to do it. You're going back to the intro. We're going to restart Fusion. I'll be right back. I guess I need one that says I'll be right back. We should get on it. Allison says do it. So we're freaking doing it. And besides, we're going to edit this out in the main video anyways. Ooh, and I'm actually running over my time, but oh well. Screw it. I'm going to hang out with you guys. I was a little late, so I feel like I got to give you a little bit extra. All right, we're going to restart Fusion right friggin' now. Next week, Allison, what are we making? Talk to me. What are we going to do? Because I've got an idea. I know next week I'm going to show off remaking the part for my dad. I've got another part from one of the viewers. It's a cupcake mold. We're going to make that live next Wednesday, 5 p.m. Eastern time. So we can hang out, have some fun. All right. Let me get back into the folder and then I will bring you back. I promise I won't forget. He says, with zero confidence. <laughs> oh, Justin, that was smart. So, that's a cool thing about Fusion. Other people can interact, and that's why we use Fusion. Because that allows our team, no matter where they are, to interact with us. I'm gonna do it myself, because I'm a big girl, and I wear big girl pants. Oh, God, why do I feel like that's gonna come back to bite me in the ass? <laughs> Oh, that's right, because the staff like to make fun of me constantly. There it is. Woo Let's do it! We're gonna send it with some Voronoi. Oh, dude, this is gonna be so cool. Construction plane. Okay, so it, it, it needs a construction plane. Oh, no, it doesn't. I can go to sketch six. <laughs> is that going to go at the end of this video when we edit it? I'm a big girl. I wear big girl pants. <laughs> I don't care. Oh. Oh, dang. Oh, this is cool. I want lots of cells. Oh, that is so dope. I have never done this before, ladies and gentlemen. This is real. This is cool. Uh, yeah, I want a border. I think. Ah, uh, no, we don't need a border. 
can zoom out to get more Voronoi or... Yeah. Should I just leave it at 101 to upset people? Oh, are you not gonna let me just choose 100? No way, come on. Oh no, it's gonna bother me. Damn you, gaming mouse, whatever. It's staying at 101%, I don't care. More cells equals more better. Are you able to do it on the sides rather than the base? I don't know. Let's do it on the base real quick and uh, let's see what happens. Or do I have to publish it? Oh, I bet I have to publish it. Dang it, Bobby. Publish. Oh, oh, it's thinking. All right, so you guys can maybe see. There you go. There is that extra processor usage. Also, it sucks RAM. About as bad as Chrome does. Oh, she's thinking. Oh, she's thinking hard. Oh, man. Justin. Justin, what'd you have me do, buddy? Fusion's mad. Go away. Hmm. I unfortunately... Oh. Uh, that's not, what? Okay, well, we're gonna redefine the sketch plane here. Uh. Hmm. So we can look at, let me redefine the sketch plane again, but let's do it. Ah, it's only gonna... Let's see how we move the sketch. Because that's really what I want to do. I don't want to have to move the part. I guess I can. I know we talked about moving parts, but... Justin, how the heck do you move these sketches? Do you know? I also want to see what you did to make it look cool. So let's let's take a look at what you did. Oh yeah, that's that's pretty cool. So you got your Voronoi sketch, but how did you get it to fit there? Am I just dumb? You didn't do a constrained sketch. Your PC is going to want to die now, he says. Look on Discord. Yep. So, all right. We're going to back up just a hair. Again, we're learning together. I never once in my life said that I was an expert. Oh, so we got to... All right. So, we want to use Sketch 6. But because of we have this big sketch, we want to do it from the inside. Oh, look at you. Smart man. Oh, it's not gonna let me do it. So, let's cheat. All right, got my plane. <laughs> right? No, let's get your profile. Turn off construction so it doesn't bother me. Uh, okay, here's another thing you can do. Oh, all right, that's fair. New sketch on the inside. Justin's right. We're going to do a new sketch on the inside, which is what we really need. We're going to project everything because we can. But yes, he's totally right. We're going to do a Voronoi on that sketch. We're going to make it nice and tiny. We only need it to be, let's do 100 millimeters by 100 millimeters. Voronoi editor. Okay, that's what I was looking for. Thanks to help, I appreciate that. He tells me to leave it. I don't want to leave it. <laughs> what is relaxation? This is just too flippin' cool. Oh, it's like they get rounded out with relaxation. I guess that kind of works for humans too. All right. 
and apparently we can go to other shapes. Dude. Oh, that kind of sucks though. I like curved. I like curved. I think it's cool. Thanks, Justin. Thanks for all your help, bro. Also, if you wouldn't have been a moderator. Ah! Still messes up on me. Dang it, Bobby. Okay, so it's constrained with inside that sketch. Hmm. So let's do this one more time. We want... Yeah, we want that. Alright, we're inside of the sketch. I am learning, I apologize, but hey, we're learning together. Justin says no more time, so apparently we're done. <laughs> um, whatever, I'm gonna try it one more time because I just don't care, and I have a way around this. It's gonna be huge, but I think it's going to be okay. Oh, you know what? Let's, one more time. I don't want it to be that big, so let's just do 15 by 15. Construction plane, XY plane is what we want. Let's publish it and let's let it happen. And he screwed it up one more time, so we're done. We're not doing Voronoi, I'm sorry. I'm just an idiot, so it's not gonna work. Maybe we'll learn that next time, but there you go. I don't know how the cup holder's going to handle it, but hey, that's okay. Now, let's say we wanted to make it taller. We can easily do that, but before we make it taller, let's cut it. Hey, at least I showed you how to do it. I didn't show you how to do it right. I never said I'd show you how to do things right. You did it correct the second to last time. You just had to move it. Well, here we are. I did it wrong, and we're just gonna make it work. So, all right, now we need to find this body. We're going to hide it because we need to do something. We need to go into modify and we need to split this freaking body. We're gonna split that body using the splitting tool of the bottom. And that is once again, going to return us to what we need to have. That's not it, is it that? There we go. Now we got our two pieces. Yeah, maybe next time. Let's do something with a Voronoi pattern next time, and I will learn. Literally, I had to restart this whole program, so, you know. Yeah, Justin's right. We'll publish both versions. The one where magic movie editing means that it looks beautiful. <laughs> That's what I really should have done. Said, oh, I did it while we were in the... No, no, I'm not going to lie to people. Um, there you go. That's it. We got our cup holder. Now, if it's a little too small... That's okay, because we can go ahead and actually, if we want to do that, we're going to get rid of this fillet. So to get rid of the fillet, but just for now, we're going to suppress the feature and that just gets rid of it. It also gets rid of the bottom fillet, but hey, who's counting? We want to copy. So we can move and copy. Actually, you can just do, I can highlight the body, which is this, and I can hit control C and control V because it works precisely the way that you would think. And I can move it right up there to create that copy. And there you go. I went from 60 to 90 millimeters tall, nice and simple. And all I would have to do is do the exact same for the back half. So yeah, I don't know. I feel like every week we find something new that I enjoy about Fusion 360, but hey, thank you all so much for watching. I think we're gonna call it here. It's been an hour and a half and the editing staff is going to hate me once again. But at least this time there are some clear things we can cut out. Um, hopefully we can play with the audio, but it's gonna be a lot of fun. Thank you guys so much for watching. And again, hey, we love that you're here. Don't forget to get subscribed. 
and let us know in the comments what you want to see made in the next live stream. I don't promise it's going to be successful, but I promise I'm going to go to work the hardest I can. My name's Grant. This is 3D Musketeers. Don't forget to call your loved ones. Stay safe out there and keep making awesome. My popular request will end with Crab Rave because apparently that's what everybody loves. Have a great one, guys. It was awesome. See you next time. Next week. Next week, 5 p.m. We'll see you there. <laughs>